Welcome back everyone to Learning and Teaching, we're in statics and today we're going to solve problem 10.3 and 10.4, okay? It says, determine the moment of inertia for the shaded area about the x-axis and for 10.4 we have to determine the moment of inertia for the shaded area about the y-axis, okay? So by definition, my moment of inertia, let's say in this case with respect to the x-axis, is going to be the integral of y squared multiplied by my differential area all over my entire area. Now, in order for this definition to work, what we have to do is that we have to make sure that from my x-axis, my differential area, ha all the points of my differential area has to have the same distance. So what do I mean by this? So in order to do this integral, we can pick either these two uh, differential areas. So we can either have our, our differential area to be horizontal or we can have our differential area to be vertical. Now, let's take a look which one of these two applies for our definition. So remember, if we're doing with respect to the x-axis, all the points of this differential area have to have the same distance. Well, for our red area, we can say, we can see right away that the points from the x-axis all the way to the chip, to the differential area are the same. Now, take, let's take a look at our blue area. One point will be here, the other point will be here, and so on, so on. So each point on this differential area, it has a different distance with respect to our axis that we want to calculate, okay? So, now we know how to pick our differential area. Now we know that we need to pick our differential area to be horizontal, in this case for the x-axis. That doesn't mean that this is the only way. If you want to pick your vertical, the problem that we'll have is that we will need to apply something called the parallel uh, theorem, okay? So, um, by experience, by my experience as a student, I, def I think of the parallel theorem a little bit more work. Therefore, I like working with our fundamental equation, okay? So, let's just start with this one. And what we can see for this differential area is that the height is equal to dy, so we're changing y, and our x will be equal, well, from here to here we have x, and then from here to here, we have another x. Therefore, our differential area, which is the area of a rectangle, will be equal to 2 times x for our base. And we, for our height, we'll have dy, so times dy. Okay? Now that we know this, we can start plugging in into our integral, and we will have integral of y squared multiplied by differential area, which is 2x multiplied by dy. Now we have that our differential is dy, therefore we can define our y limits, so we are from 0 all the way to 200, so we can say 0 to 200, but what we don't have right now is that we need to change this x in y term in order to solve for this integral. So let's do that. Over here in the problem, they give us that this paralleloid, um, this parabolic, I'm sorry, uh, shape is defined by y equals to 1 over 50 x squared. Okay? So if we want to know x in terms of y, what we can do is solve for x. So we solve for x, and we will realize that it will be 50 times y, all over all raised to the one half power now that we know this we can plug this into our moment of inertia so we'll have an integral from 0 to 200 millimeters y squared times 2 times and then we have 50 y raised to the one half and then we have dy okay so after having this, we can take our calculator and we're going to use the program math 9 in order to solve for this. And when we plug this into our calculator, 
we will realize that our moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis is going to be equal to 457 times 10 to the 6 and the units are millimeters to the 4 power, okay? So basically, this is our answer for our problem 10.3. So this is 10.3, okay? Now, if we want to do the moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis, we and we're going to use the definition again. So let's just start by writing the definition. So let's say we want to find moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis. We're going to have our distance x squared multiply my, my differential area all over my area. But let's not forget that our distance with respect to my y-axis has to be the same for the entire differential area. Now, if we take a look at this red one, there are different distances for this differential area. So we need to pick a different differential area. And guess what? For this one, we can use our blue, our blue differential area that I drew before. That it will look something like this, okay? Now let's check it out. So for this differential area, all my points are at the same distance with respect to my y-axis. Since they are at the same distance with respect to the y-axis, remember, y -axis, why do we care to be the same distance with respect to the y-axis? Because we're doing the moment of inertia with respect to the y, okay? So now we know that that's our differential area. This is going to be dx because that's the little base that's changing. And the height is always going to be this 200 minus this little corner in here. Well, that little corner in here is equal to y. Therefore, our differential area will look something like this. So if we draw our differential area in here, just to zoom in and be a little bit more clear about it, we will have dx in here, and our height will be a total of 200 minus the value of y. So, for example, in this case, my differential area in here will be 200 minus this value of y that starts here and ends up in here and is given by this equation, right? So, we know that my differential area, well, the area of our rectangle will be base times high. So, we got 200 minus y multiplied by dx, okay? Now that we have this, we can plug it into our differential area, I'm sorry, our moment of inertia. So we have the integral from of x squared multiplied by 200 minus y multiplied by dx. Now we can see that our differential is in the x direction. So our limits will go from negative 100. So this distance is negative 100 and positive 100. So we got negative 100, positive 100. But we still need to substitute this y for in terms of x, okay? In order to have everything in the same variable. The good thing is that we already know how much that is. We know that y is equal to 1 over 50 of x squared. So we can just plug that in. So we have i, uh, i sub y, meaning moment of inertia with respect to the y direction. Well, the y-axis from negative 100 to positive 100 millimeters of x squared multiplied by 200 minus what we have, which is 1 over 50 x squared dx, okay? Now what we can do, we're going to use our calculator. We're going to apply math 9 and we're going to solve for this integral and we're going to end up that our moment of inertia with respect to the y axis is going to be equal to 500 so let's see it's going to be 53 times 10 to the negative 6 i'm sorry to the positive 6 millimeters the four okay 
and this is my answer for my problem 10.4 If you guys liked the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.